person that we have up is Rebecca. Which, oh, there she is. She got short. I didn't see. I was looking for And Rebecca is a poet and a, and a good storyteller and a poet person. Are you telling a story or reading a poem? Okay. And uh, she, she's a member of the, what are, your, what are you guys called? A little group <laughs> of, of poets and story writers, and they meet out at my place in, in uh, Diamond Willow, and uh, I get to listen to this stuff. Often she makes me cry, so if you see me leaving the room, that's cuz. Thank you, Karen. Oh, I hope everyone can hear me. Well, that's a hard act to follow. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Karen. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just, I have so many talented people here tonight. Amazing. Um, so this poem was recently published in a, a journal called Room Magazine, and the uh, theme of the issue was family secrets. Um, I have a little brother, and uh, we had a difficult childhood, and uh, he, uh, he was really one of the things that got me through it. Um, so when there was sort of everything in our lives was inconsistent, he was that one constant thing. So it's called The Lost Places. Brother, do you remember the park across the street from our childhood home? Spruce boughs draped around us like the dark green robes of wizards. Down a slope laddered with roots, we would run, picking up speed so we nearly tumbled forward, the feeling like the moment before flight. Do you remember the creek lush with grasses that left slender cuts on our bare arms and legs like pink hieroglyphs? From the shallow murk, we scooped minnows into mason jars, their bodies quick and silver as wishes in those worlds of glass. We always poured them back, but didn't we want to hold them in our hands forever? take them home and set them on our nightstands so they could flicker beside our heads as we slept. In those days, our parents came and went, replaced by the faceless haze of nannies and relatives. In those days, you were all I had. I know I was cruel at times, as older sisters are, but please believe I tried so hard to keep you safe. And didn't we survive? As our real lives dissolved, we wove new ones from thin spools of dream. Do you remember our freedom, how magic shone from everything? In the backyard, stones nestled in moss became dinosaur eggs, and garden shears pterodactyls tending their nests. Brother, it was years ago but I need to know if you too remember this joy, this grief, these lost places. But most of all, I need to know whether or not I failed you. <laughs> Sorry, Karen. <laughs> Um, so I wrote this poem as part of a writer's retreat that I did, and the assignment was to write a poem of address, so in which you address something else. Um, so this poem is called Mule Deer in Winter. Driving home from work, exhausted, wanting the day to be over, I pass a herd of you lying in a field, legs tucked neatly beneath your bodies, each hoof delicate enough to fit inside a teacup. Breathing together in the stubble, you flick ample ears against the falling snow that gathers on your thickened fur, patient as sages. Maybe it's the way snow tempers the world, smoothing the edges, but I want to believe I could walk among you and you would not flinch the quiet lakes of your eyes, seeing me for the wounded thing I am, taking me in. You know nothing of the anger I pack through my life. Wise ones, let me rest inside the warm mist of your breaths, 
Teach me about forgiveness, the kind that steps slim-legged into a clearing and kneels finally down. Thank you. Um, so this is the last poem I'll read. Um, and most of my poems, as you might have noticed, uh, tend to be sad or on the sad side. So this was my stab at a kind of happy poem, <laughs> I think. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> poem for a mended world. The long white bones of aspen and birch gleam in the sun, reflecting each other, the woods a hall of mirrors. Stepping in, my feet find the cool shade emanating from the undergrowth. I breathe the green syrup of new leaves. The world shifts in the shadows, an animal stirring from sleep. Even the breeze knows something I don't stops to listen. Sunlight trickles down through the canopy like spring water through stones. Birds stipple twigs, quick flicks like a salamander's tongue. Life uncoils around me, earth surprising itself with saplings. In the silence underfoot, trees speak to each other through their roots send healing where it's needed most. Thank you. Yeah.